Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's launch of the Seven C's for Embedding Stu Student Success, a toolkit for higher education institutions. And this resource has been developed in partnership with the HEA and in consultation with the sector. A little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, the launch will be recorded. You'll have seen the recording button, and we'll make a recording available uh, on the National Forum website later. Um, please use the chat. We'd encourage you to use the chat to share comments or insights as we go along. Um, you will have an opportunity to, uh, ta to talk, to answer questions, to share your insights and your comments on the toolkit uh, later on in the session. Um, so when that happens, we'll be, you'll be able to turn on your mic. I would ask that you keep your mics on mute until uh, you're actually speaking. Um, we have closed captions available. So, and this can be switched on from the menu at the bottom of your window, of the bottom of your window, if anybody wants just to switch that on. So I'm delighted uh, that Minister Harris agreed to launch um, the, this uh, toolkit for us. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be with us today, but he pre-recorded pre this message for us. Hi there, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you here today for the launch of the Student Success Toolkit. Across our education system, our teachers, lecturers, career guidance counsellors and everyone in the education sector is doing their very best to ensure all our students succeed and grow each day on their educational journey. Success takes many forms and we all grow when we have that sense of belonging, where our individual goals and our aspirations are supported. As we support our students to reach their full potential, they and their learning must be central to our consideration. This particular toolkit being launched today will guide everybody in our higher education institutions. In those key planning moments, we must stop and ask ourselves, are we doing the right thing for our students? Are we reaching all the diverse needs of our student body? Student success is everyone's business, including our students. With the help of the work being undertaken by the National Forum, who to their great credit continue the national conversation with all key stakeholders, our institutions are now much more focused on developing a more inclusive environment within our higher education setting. Student success is about giving students the opportunity to recognise and realise their potential. Partnership is the only universal aspect of student success. Our focus must be on working together to optimise the learning environment for all our students. This year, it's more important than ever, especially to those who have become first years and those who are second years but have not yet had the first year they expected. We must pay particular attention to ensure that sense of belonging as we continue to navigate the impact of COVID-19 on all of our lives. As we now move to finalise our new national access plan for 22 to 26 before the end of this year, we hope to have a more student-centred plan that drives our strategic goal of inclusion, which is a cornerstone of my departments. I want to finish today by congratulating the National Forum for Teaching and Learning, led by Dr Terry Maguire and the HEA on this work. And with a final remember to all of us, including myself, that student success is everybody's business. I wish the sector every success as you continue to develop and implement these student success strategies. Most importantly, my wish today is that our students and our future students reap the full range of rewards from the time they spend in higher education. Gurmila Malgov. And um, thank you, Minister. Um, you know, it's been a long journey. And, you know, as a sector, we've worked together, we've, we've developed a national understanding of student success. And if you think over the last number of years, what, what the changes that have happened, We've, we stopped talking about non-completion. We now talk about student success. We don't talk about retention. We, talk, we focus on engagement. We've, we've moved from attainment to learning. And um, we recognize the need to empower our students um, to, to achieve their own potential. And we know that we can help them by identifying and removing obstacles that hinder them and hinder what, what they want and their own view of student success. We know student success is in binary and we can't be encapsulated in metrics such as the retention or progression rates. And we know that it requires whole of institution approaches. It's been a long journey. Um, I certainly have been working on this for now nearly seven years. But for those of you that aren't familiar with some of, of, of those big milestones, let's have a look at the short video to bring you up to speed on how we came to today.
I think one of the it's it's amazing when you put it all together like that in a very short video. Um, it's the, the all the work and the hard work that has gone in uh, to getting to where you are. It, I'm not sure that it captures it as much as we would like, but it's it's definitely I think tells the journey um, that we've travelled with student success. And one of the things that we learned very early on, and uh, listening to our students and working with our students is that student success is very individualized. And one of the reasons we went with a national understanding and not a definition of student success was so that we enabled all of those understandings of student success to be considered. And I think uh, in preparation for today, we spoke with some of the students and their, our student representatives, and we asked them what student success means to them. And I think you'll agree with me, the different views of student success are shine through. Student success for me personally is the pathway to a better future for both myself and my son, and the higher likelihood that my son will end up in a higher educational institute. It's so important to embed student success into the institutions as it means that we are encouraging inclusivity and that nobody, no matter what the skill, background or demographic, is left behind. For me, student success is about finding yourself. It's about being ambitious and taking the opportunities that are open for you. It's also about finding the courage and the confidence and pushing yourself to do the things that you want to do. I feel I can succeed as a student when I'm given access to a broad range of educational opportunities, when I also have help available to remove any barriers that may prevent me from achieving my full potential in higher education, and finally when I feel heard, fulfilled and supported in my higher educational institution. I felt like having no degree is holding me back from getting a job in the top management. So for me, student is success means doing well in the classroom, leaving with a first class degree and finding employment afterwards. Also because of the MBA, I'm interacting with different students and lecturers from different backgrounds, which is improving my communications and business skills. Student success for me is realizing that I, that I needed an extra year after I completed my leaving cert to do a PLC and realizing that there is no shame in taking an extra year or two or however long you may need to, to make sure that this path is right for you. So I think it's, it's a really difficult question because it really depends on the person. It can depend on the time of year. It can depend on the content they're even studying. But I think it's really, it's feeling comfortable and confident with the skills and knowledge from whatever you're studying, whether that's a discipline, whether that's something more practical. Student success means to me leading by example and being passionate about um, delivering upon your goals. So in my case, I did a PLC and then a three year law degree. And I'm now the Vice President for Education for the Student Union in IT Carlo. I plan after this going on to uh, Blackhawk Place in Dublin to study for my FE1 exams to be a solicitor. Student success to me is having the opportunity, the support and the information needed so that I can complete my degree to the best of my ability. To me, student success is overcoming obstacles to find my passion in education. It is the immense personal growth from a distracted, underachieving undergrad to a highly successful and empowered master's student, striving to make education a more accessible and inclusive place. I was extremely lucky to be enveloped by encouragement and backing from my university community in a time of need. Something I hope all students can experience within their institution. Um, student success to me is all about having those connections, uh, clear communication portals and building those relationships with yourself and your lecture to build your um, portfolio, um, get the references so you can progress in your education and postgrad. When I think of student success, I don't think of a grade that's on the paper or on your degree. I actually think about more your personal experiences and like how you look back and you think I've actually grown so much or I've learnt so much. For me, student success is getting to learn something new every day and going to a college course that I really, really enjoy.
And I'd like to thank all of the students that made a contribution um, uh, to the video. Um, the resource that we're launching today has been developed in partnership with HEA, and it now gives me a great pleasure to invite Katrina Ryan, the Head of Access Policy in the HEA, to say a few words. Katrina? Um, thank you, Terry, and, and good morning, everyone. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Um, the HEA has been working in partnership with the National Forum for a very long time. As Terry has said, it's been a long journey, but I think, well, I know it's been a really productive journey, and it's great to be at this point and to reach this milestone where we're actually launching um, the Seven Seas um, Student Toolkit, Student Success Toolkit. Um, this, I suppose, just to give a little bit of history, though, I think a lot of the videos did that for us. Um, the current National Access Plan, which commenced implementation in, in 2016, um, one of the things, the objectives it, it, it asked the sector to look at was the issue of non-completion and to look at retention levels, particularly among um, the, the, the target groups for the National Access Plan. So I suppose we, we were, were th thinking about how do we address this objective and, and we started the process of talking to the forum. They were, they were the obvious stakeholders to speak to given their, their role in, in the teaching and learning space. And it became really, really clear um, from the start that this wasn't going to be a quick job. This wasn't something that we could rush. Um, and that we really started by looking at the language and saying the language was all wrong. And words like non-completion, retention, they create completely the wrong image and, and, and don't really shape what we want to do as a higher education system. And that we needed to frame the conversation much, much differently. And from that, the whole concept of student success and, and that terminology emerged. And I think just listening to the students in, in the video prior to this, just hearing the vast array of definitions and what success means to different people, it just reinforces that it is the right way to speak about uh, to speak about um, student success and that, that progression, retention. They're, they're words, but they're, they're, they don't really capture the essence of what is a system we're trying to achieve. And I think this is very much picked up in the, in the system performance framework because it, it embraced that principle of student success and the idea that every institution should have a student success strategy um, in place. Um, so going way back to back to 2016, 17, when we started this journey, we started off by talking to some students and, and learned, just like we learned today, that success can mean very different things to, to different people. Um, and it very much depends on the particular point you are at in your studies and your career in, in your life, life decisions. Um, and and it, it's really important that we capture this in, in, in any approach to student success. I think what we really learned as well was that for every student, regardless of background or, or wherever um, backstories or whatever um, circumstances that they have in their lives, that every student struggles at some point during the higher education journey. It's not an easy journey. Um, whether they be financial struggles or whatever they might be or other personal struggles, everyone struggles at some point. And that it's important that when we think about student success, that we normalize these struggles and say, yes, it's, it's fine, it's okay to struggle, but there are supports and these supports can be individual, individually tailored um, um, to, to, help, to help and support students. And I suppose what we learned is there are certain tipping points or certain things can happen that might seem quite small, but can make a huge difference on the student success journey. Whether it be, you know, if a student who might not have logged into whatever teaching platforms, just even getting an email saying, we see you haven't logged in in a while, are you okay? Can we talk to you? You know, is there anything you need? That, that those kind of things can help. And I suppose we'd interact very closely with the access officers. And we know from the um, those involved in managing, say, the student assistance fund, that yes, of course, this financial support is important, but also part of the process of, of, of um, getting a student assistance fund is maybe a conversation with someone in the access office and that that conversation can be really, really important in that, that interaction. Um, and th and that, that, that um, applies to other admin and other services, every part of a higher education institution, really any interaction that, a, that the institution has with students can be important in, um, in helping a student get over that, that struggle that, that we're now trying to normalize and understand that every student will struggle and that it's, it's the supports that are in place that are, that are so important. So from that, those early interactions with students, we moved on to the extensive consultation process. Some of them were illustrated in the video there. It, we had a three-day event involving all of the stakeholders. We had a um, student consultation event. And we, I remember the last in-person event we had be before the pandemic, we really heard some really impactful student stories. And I think they really have, have drove the process forward and our understanding of what it is to be a student, what success means, and how it can be supported in, in all its... Um, it all in whatever success is it can be supported in, in various different approaches and, and methodologies and 
I suppose what, what also comes through is the individual nature of it and that while supports can be general um, and broad and, and are there to meet everyone's needs when it when they're actually being um, interact when you're actually interacting with students there they need things need to be tailored to an individual level and I suppose that's what that this toolkit is all about is, is it's supporting students at an individual level so that they can achieve their individual student success objective um, so I suppose um, I'd just like to say the forum has done amazing work in, 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 in the, the consultation process and in bringing the, the toolkit and the framework um, to this, um, what I think is, is will be a fantastic resource for institutions and policymakers in, in understanding student success and in developing student success strategies. Um, what, what, what to me, I, I was, I'm delighted to see the student success strategies in the system performance framework, but I think we all know some strategies get published and but then sit in a shelf so I think with this toolkit allows a student success strategy to be is a real living working document that will be practical and and and, and used um, and not just a strategy for the sake of a strategy and I, I think the process of consultation and, and the work that's gone into the framework enables it to be this I think lots of us could have written strategies five years ago but it's meaningful strategies is what we want and strategies that will work. And I, and I think this toolkit is, 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 is really important in helping to deliver that. The timing of today, I, I think, is, is, very, is very appropriate as well, because we're working with the Department of Further and Higher Education in developing the next um, access plan. We're at a very advanced stage at this point. And, and earlier on this year, we've engaged in a very extensive consultation process. And, I, and having been someone who's involved in the previous plans consultation process, I really saw a big shift in emphasis um, in what's coming through the consultation. And I think what everyone was saying to us, um, stakeholders and students, is that student success needs to be at the heart of the next plan. And I think it was captured in one of the slides there. It, it, things need to go beyond access. It's access and, 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 and student success. And that that's, that's really important. And I suppose this, this, what we're hearing is that we need approaches in teaching learning and throughout, eight, throughout institutions that recognise that there is diversity in the student population. And it's this diversity is what gives higher education a, a richness and, and, and is so positive for higher education. But that this toolkit and what institutions need to do, I suppose, is look at the structures, the supports, the services, the teaching, learning, everything that is delivered to ensure that it it, it drives student success and allows for that individual and, and, and tailored approach to, to enable each individual student to meet their own individual goals. And, and I think that's it will be really important and, and really valuable. And I'm sure um, as everything the forum does, it will be a living and active document that as, as, as it's used, it will be reviewed and evaluated and, and, and changed over time. And I think that it's important that it is a living document and um, that, that that's, that's essential. So I suppose I'll conclude by just thanking everyone, especially the forum for, for all of their work. But I think there's a huge amount of people and stakeholders, a huge amount of students, all the people who were consulted along the journey and, and gave their time and their contributions. It's all been really important in getting in getting to today. So again, congratulations to the forum. And I'd just like to wish everyone the very best in, in, in using the forum, in using the toolkit and implementing it on, on an active daily basis. So thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Katrina. And now, um, as you know, the National Forum of Knowledge work works in partnership with students. And in particular, we really value our partnership with USI and the other students union. So I'm delighted now to welcome Megan O'Connor, Vice President for Academic Affairs for the USI to say a few words. Thank you so much, Terry. And it is a, a pleasure to be with you all today for, for the launch of the 70th season student success toolkit, which as, as everyone has said now, but I, I'll have to reiterate that I think it's going to be an incredible resource um, for everyone across the sector, um, staff and students alike, in, in facilitating that sustainable enhancement um, as the living document, as Katrina talked about, in ensuring that students do reach their full potential. Um, this project was spearheaded by a student representative many years ago, and it was something that at the time mightn't have been seen as a priority within the sector, um, but they persisted and ensured that conversation continued. And looking back on the story so far earlier, it was really incredible to be able to see that timeline so succinctly from that national um, scoping group back in 2017, that was four years ago, if you look at how far we've come um, since the work that was done then, um, everyone that was involved in every project, report, uh, workshop, um, all have contributed to what we have today. And I think certainly I feel very privileged to have somewhat inherited um, that incredible <laughs> resource. That's something that we can we can use um, on the ground each, each day in practice. And to see 
student success is one of the key strategic priorities of something like the National Forum with the dedicated team that are doing incredible work um, day in, day out. It was already touched on, but we really are in changing the language that we use and that language is impacting our practice. It's impacting how students perceive um, the sector that they, that they enter. And a huge amount of work was done as part of the National Access Plan in considering Ireland's ever growing diversity within um, HEIs. And we must ensure their focus going forward isn't just on progression or access or a tick the box exercise in student engagement, but that we continue these really meaningful conversations and facilitation of such projects um, to ensure the betterment of, of the student experience. As the minister touched on before, um, student success really is everyone's business. And I think we're coming to a place where we can say that that is what we're doing. Um, partnerships between students and student organizations, such as um, the USI with the National Forum, the HEA, HEIs across the country is invaluable. And it is something that has gone from strength to strength over the years. And I think it's currently in a space where it can always be improved, but I think it's something we can be very proud of. Um, with resources such as the Seven Scenes Toolkit, we can take further strides in ensuring that this partnership isn't just existing amongst us who are having this conversation here, but are mirrored between institutions and their students at a local level. Um, so as I'm sure you've heard every USI representative say, <laughs> through the years, me and Yart, like, yeah, there is no strength without unity. Um, so I would like to extend my sincere thanks to those who have spent the last few months and years in preparation of today uh, to commend the toolkit as, as a resource. And I have to say, I'm really looking forward to continuing um, working alongside students across the country in promoting this resource, working alongside our partners in the National Forum and across the sector with the many months and, and years to come. Thank you very much, Megan. And now I think the time is 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 right to uh, to show you the toolkit and uh, to demonstrate uh, our online interface. Um, I have a version of it here, but I will. What I'll do is I'll just share my screen for a moment, and um, I'll, I'll just take you through the different parts of the toolkit in the first instance. So the toolkit, so first of all, the aim of this toolkit is to support institutions to take a whole of institution approach to embedding a process for the continuing enhancement of student success, right? So it's, it's, it's not a tick box, it's nothing. This is about building that sustainable approach to embedding student success within institutions. And the toolkit, as you can see, it's available as a printed pack. And we thought that people would, would, would like to have a, 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 an actual pack to be able to use now that we were able to have more face-to-face -face events for, for um, workshops within institutions. And um, it's also available on an online interface and I'll, I'll actually demonstrate that later on. So the toolkit has um, a user guide um, and it has a number of associated components and the pack itself has got quite a lot of bits as you can see. So, what the toolkit does is it actually builds on the framework. We identified 12 enablers under three pillars in our guiding framework. And what the toolkit um, does is it actually extends and shows institutions and helps institutions to interpret what each one of those enablers means in practice. But underpinning the whole toolkit is the seven C's, commit, Get institutions to commit, collaborate, build a community, build consensus, communicate with each other, connect and continue the process as we go through it. So one of the, if you, one of the things that we have outlined in, as part of the toolkit is to say somebody in an institution needs to be identified to actually lead this process within the institution. And that person has got to be supported by partners across the other, uh, a whole range of function, all the function areas within the institutions. What we talked about then is that they, we need these to, to collaborate, to build the sh their own shared vision, to understand the national understanding, to understand uh, the framework and the enablers, and to build their own vision for what student success means in their local context. And then rather than um, make the decisions at that level, We've provided tools that allow all stakeholders, students, staff, across the whole institution to be able to contribute to, um, to the process. And 
to ask them what's working well, what needs development. And we have a, our, our interface allows all that to be collected and collated and looked at uh, by institutions. Um, once they've got all this data back, we ask institutions then to actually build a consensus. What are the key things we're going to work on in this next period? What are the key things we're going to work on together? And from that, they're going to develop an implementation plan, an institutional implementation plan, which is then connected back into the functional areas. So those high level targets set in an institution are going to be interpreted within functional areas so that they can identify within the functional area, what does that target mean for us? What do we need to do? And we're encouraging a process of continuous evaluation based on feedback, continual conversation to ensure that the process keeps going and, and is repeated. To help um, institutions, we, for each enabler, we've built, we've developed statements. So each um, enabler has a series of statements that actually, if you were, I describe it, and the, my team are going to laugh now, is the Valhalla. You've got to travel through the seven seas to get the Valhalla. So the statements is what institutions should be looking for and aiming to. But the, the other thing about these statements is what we hope they do, is we hope they're going to be used to initiate discussions and to disrupt and challenge context-based thinking and to promote positive enhancement. For each of the um, statements, we've developed rubrics. And the rubrics are helping, the aim of the rubrics is to help to find a, a starting point to help you to take stock of where you're at. And um, we have developed the online tool, which I'll demo in a moment. And from that tool, individuals will get, will be able to uh, input where they think student success is at. And those leaders and partners within the institutions will be able to collate information across cohorts of staff or students or for the institution and get a clear picture of what's working and what needs development. We know that our staff and students are not homogenous. So part of the toolkit is to prompt those while you're working within the institutions is to prompt you to think about the whole very variety of students and staff that you, you have. And we've come up with them, um, I think quite an, an interesting uh, way of doing this. Uh, we call it um, the, the flippy books. So within the flippy books, we have a, a staff persona generator and a student persona generator. And what you do is you can turn different pages and you get different profiles of students. So the idea is when you're thinking about policies, thinking about practices, thinking about any decision-making, you say, well, does it work with this kind of student? Does it work with that kind of student? Does it work with this kind of staff? Does it work with that kind of staff? And the main thing is, is to recognize that staff and students are very diverse. And this is to prompt the, the groups working in the institution to acknowledge that diversity and to plan for it. Um, we've also included templates for rubric scoring that could be used face-to-face -face and, and action-based templates for implementation um, that can be used. Um, the pack will be sent to all institutions, hopefully in the next few, well, I promise by the end of the year, um, uh, and um, hopefully sooner if, if we can do that. We just have to get into the Royal Irish Academy to get all the packs back out again and, and things like that. But certainly in the next few weeks, we'll get the packs out to everybody. But in the interim, we have developed a dedicated web space, which I'm actually going to show you now. So I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen again to the web space. So this is our web space. Um, and you can see it's, it's introducing the toolkit. Uh, we've got the video story so far that, that we played earlier on. Um, this, this will be under the story, student success, the story so far, you can see um, we've captured all the milestones as we've traveled this journey together. Uh, we've included our guiding framework 
because it's upon this framework that the, the, the toolkit's actually built. We have the seven C's process itself. That's our national understanding, reminding you where it came from, and then the process itself. And we're very clear about who should be involved. Institutions do need to identify leaders. They need to identify um, partners and all stakeholders within the institution need to participate. We've given you guidance on how to use the resources. We have a, a digital, we have the Taking Stock Digital Tool. I'm going to come back to that one. Uh, we have an online persona generator. It's interesting, some of the persona that it, um, it comes up with, but you just generate a persona. Or you can develop student persona. And these are used, the main point of these is to actually get you to think about um, the different types of staff and students that are available. Or sorry, that are within your institution. And then on our, on our, as in our downloadable resources, you can download all of the resources. You can download individual components, or you can download resources by each pillar. So enabling institutional capabilities, culture, or practices. So I'm going to go back to the Taking Stock uh, digital tool, and I'm going to show you how this works. Now, in the next few weeks, we're going to write out to all of the registrars within the institutions, and we're going to ask them um, to identify the student success lead person for their institution. That person will be allocated a login to a NEEC account for their institution that will give them access to this taking stock digital tool. We have a, a demo version of it available on, on, the, on the website. Now, once the student lead has access to it, they're able to create accounts for the partners in the different functional areas across the institution. And so I have an account set up here. I'll just go in it just now. So if I'm a partner within an institution, I can actually set up accounts for, I can set up um, links to the Taking Stock tool for staff or for technical staff or senior managers or all staff all students or different cohorts of students. It's very simple to do. You just create a cohort link. And a cohort description. You can make this as, as then you create your cohort. So your cohort then comes up here. Now, as a, as, a, as a partner, so within your function area, you can see all the entries from different cohorts. These are the enablers, and I'll explain what these mean in, in a moment. You can, and uh, you're able to download all of the data from all, from individual or all your cohorts. Um, you're able to download that data um, um, into Excel so you can play around with the different data. So let's, let's see what happens when I actually um, get a link to the Taking Stock digital tool. So as a partner, you've set up the link. I'll just take, go to the tool now. And I go in to demo the tool. So what you're asked, this is, this is what the link that you've created will give people access here. So I'm a staff member. I go next. This is the, we asked people to read the rubric and based on that rubric to decide where they think their, where they think their function area or institution is positioned. We also asked them to think about what they do well and to 
capture it here. Are, are any areas of development that they, they might identify? For each of the enablers, for each of the enablers, there's a, a rubric. So the, the respondent has got to fill in for the 12 rubrics. And I'll just move my screen. So at the end, once you've filled in all the rubrics, um, you can then generate your report. And each participant gets a report that positions against each enabler, the development stage they think student success is at. You can see the different, um, you can see here the different um, pillars, capabilities, culture, and practices. The report also captures everything that individuals have actually captured that, do, that they think is done well and the areas for development. And we've also included what does the different stage actually mean. So if I'm a, a, a student success partner, I can actually collate all of this information and gather up everything in one report everything that everyone has said about um, uh, what we do well or, or where and uh, what needs to be developed and the different stages that we're actually at. We're really hopeful that um, the tool will be will be used um, by institutions as part of that consultation process of, in terms of taking stock and where they are. So I'm going to stop the share for a moment. Um, I'm interested in that's that's what we've developed. I'm interested in what you think about it and um, and how you think it will work. Is anybody going to comment, please? <laughs> you can turn on your mic. If you just put your reaction, you put your hand up if you'd like to say anything and we'll um, we'll do it now. It's not, it's, we're going to continue to work uh, with this. We put a comments uh, box on the website. So any ideas you have for improvement. Um, but the other thing, just to, to let you know that um, one of the things we're not as happy, we, it, it's mobile friendly, but not as good as we would like. So it'll be mobile friendly um, over the next few weeks when we actually just get that, um, to get that done. Um, uh, Jill, you'd like to come in. Sorry. Um, great. Um, I'm just absolutely amazing and uh, resource. I'm just wondering, will there be support for people to implement its use um, within the institution? So I know you were saying there a moment ago, um, Terry, about the you know, registrar will be contacted and then they'll nominate a person in house. So um, I work with TU Dublin and Heidi Kelly Hogan is is looks at student retention and success. So she might be sort of an obvious person, but there might be somebody else that, that he has in mind. And I'm just wondering, it's a brilliant toolkit and there's lots of sort of nooks and crannies in it. Um, will there be a little bit of a sort of hand holding in terms of, of how it's it's rolled out so that it gets uh, its, its, I suppose, best use? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. The student success team uh, will support institutions in its implementation. And uh, when we go out to our registrars, we're asking the registrars to identify up to three leads, up to three people that will have access to the interface. And uh, as required, once the leads are identified, the forum will run, you know, support webinars and that, but you, you won't be left on your own, don't worry. Uh, Margaret, would you like to come in? Hi, uh, Dean. Um, Mark Finch, just from MTU Kerry campus. Um, I just want to say, first of all, I just, it's fantastic. It's amazing. And it's the energy of everybody who spoke today. Um, and I think that's, you know, you, even looking in the chat, the reaction to the toolkit is just how stimulating and innovative and creative it looks visually and how you describe it. So 
it, it, that will be the feel. And I don't think we could have had better time post COVID in the return and the hybrid, the, the whole sense of new and energy that is in people. Um, and again, it just brings people the whole COVID experience for students. Uh, a lot of the feedback I'm getting is just brought them into what do I really want, you know, and really what is success to them. So it's an amazing time to be able to be part of changing on every level, not just one micro piece of the whole experience, you know, student engagement, assessment, teaching, learning, and it's it, it's just fantastic. And it's a, it's a really exciting thing to be present in the process of it happening. So thanks to everybody, really. Is oh, what thank I'm you saying. very much, Margaret. Uh, Jennifer, I'll, I'll, I'll just ask Jennifer and then we'll move to our, uh, our speakers. Jennifer. Um, thanks very much, Anna. Again, I just I, I came in a little bit late. Um, I was coming from our academic council that, that I had to attend. But I'm it's really impressive and, and the, the whole student success concept I think is brilliant. And I think having a tool like this to support and help us and I'd really commend it. Um, I think in, in, in relation to the comments about you know going to the register, I think it's great to get that senior management and from the top down support on this. Um, so that we can make sure everybody gets involved. And I think that's something we'll certainly work hard with the registrar. You know, we may have one person managing the tool, but I would definitely think the intention is to have as many people as possible involved in this. I think it's it's really important that, that the whole university gets involved in staff, yeah. academic and non-academic across the board. So, and I think the tool really helps that. So I, I commend that. And I, I and that's what the whole idea of the, the student lead has act, it, it creates the account for everybody that they want to be involved in the institution. And we're saying that should be representatives from across every functional area. There's no limit to the number of partners you can develop within the institution. Because remember, student success is everybody's business. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so if, what I'm going to do will, will, is, is I would now like to just move on. We have a couple of inputs. So in 2020, um, the Strategic Alignment Fund uh, was focused on transforming teaching and learning for student success. And it was a 5 million euro fund. It funded 74 initiatives across the sector and it involves over 300 staff and students. And what we thought we'd do today is to actually showcase some of the initiatives that are happening within the institutions that are actually embedding student success. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Jim O'Mahony, uh, who also is one of our student success, is on our student success advisory group from Munster Technological University. And Jim will talk about the local enhancement project or the, uh, in MTU. I'm also delighted to welcome Dr. Adjila um, Reske from UL, who will share their STELLA initiative, Student Evaluation and Learning Analytics. And I'm particularly delighted to welcome Dr. Dylan Stallion from DCU. Dylan was actually one of our student associate members of the National Forum, so he's well acquainted with the National Forum last year he, uh, from UL, and he's moved to DCU, having got his PhD. So well done, Dylan, and thank you for your support today. So I'll, I'll hand over to uh, Jim O'Mahony now. Jim, if you'd like to, to speak first. Sure. Uh, thanks, Terry. Um, is it okay to share my screen? I pass yes, the slide yes, yesterday, absolutely. but I, I can share. Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can do it from here. So might just let me know if you can... If you can perfect. see that. That's perfect. Okay, let's go to presentation mode. Um, so yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. It's a great opportunity just to be able to present some of the outputs of the um, MTU local enhancement projects. Um, so I'm just going to present really quickly. I was told this is a lightning talk, so uh, this shouldn't go more than more than three minutes if things go according to plan. Um, and uh, anything that we do in MTU uh, across teaching and learning is done as part of a team. And uh, one of the great things of working in a team is that uh, different people step forward to take part in, in different initiatives. Uh, and I think it's really important to list the whole team here. But in particular, it's uh, it's really important to acknowledge the invaluable uh, help and support that Will Carey has been um, in terms of working on the ground day to day with all those who were successfully awarded LEP projects in, in MTU uh, and also to Maurice Birmingham, who is our head of TLU and student engagement and uh, drives really everything very positively uh, around uh, teaching and learning and student engagement. 
So when we came to this um, uh, SATLE uh, project, we were already in a, in a pretty strong position in that we had started to support uh, teaching and learning projects right across the uh, what was Cork Institute of Technology at the time. And we had already supported over 100 teaching and learning projects. And in the last while, we have started to uh, introduce a learning community culture. And in the last two or three years, we now have 30 plus uh, learning communities right across uh, different disciplines and programs in, in MTU. So just thought it might be helpful to give a very quick overview of, of how we um, managed um, the funding and support from the National Forum. I know different universities worked in different ways, but uh, we set up a collaborative team. This is one of the first initiatives that we undertook as, as a university. We were originally Cork Institute of Technology and Institute of Technology Tralee. So collectively between the registrar's offices and the teaching and learning teams, we, we assembled a, a working group, um, including a bank of external uh, educational review viewers and of the money that was given to us, uh, we ring fenced 190,000 um, uh, to use for these uh, LEP projects. And uh, we just solicited applications from right across uh, every discipline, students, staff, support, uh, um, staff across the, the university, uh, of which we received 44 applications. And through that screening process, we were then able to support uh, 20 of them. And the projects that we had were, were wide ranging. Some of them were discipline specific, some uh, focused on programs and some focused on, on instit institutional aspects of, of teaching and learning. So I'm just going to very quickly run through four um, lightning uh, examples of the type of work that we, we supported and that the National Forum helped us to support. So the first one here was led out by uh, Jessica Carson from the Crawford College of, of Art and Design. Um, uh, Jessica heads up uh, a teaching program there on creativity and, and change. Um, and uh, because of the pandemic, it was difficult to undertake this, this project under normal circumstances, and they literally moved uh, all the learning that they um, had uh, subscribed to this program outdoors, uh, which was a, which was a really interesting and innovative way of, of showing that uh, not even a pandemic can, can limit uh, good teaching and, uh, and good learning. Uh, this next one is one we're, we're really proud of. This was spearheaded by our uh, biology department, uh, Dr. Bridget Lucy and Dr. Leslie Cotter. Um, and what's unique about this is that it's uh, it's an international undergraduate of, uh, of health sciences, which could stand shoulder to shoulder with any uh, peer reviewed uh, publication in terms of its professionalism and how it's presented. But what really makes it unique is that it's 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 mainly run by by students for students. So the editor in chief is a student. Uh, those who review the, um, the submissions are, are students. Those who write the articles are students. Um, and ably supported, as I said, by Bridget and and Leslie, and also by members of our of our library team in in MTU. Uh, so we're really proud of of that. And as I said, stands head and shoulders above um, uh, many of the the peer reviewed journals that 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 are currently out there. Um, another one, just to very quickly talk about, is a is a project that was um, coordinated by Will Carey uh, by Cleana. Uh, Hitano and uh, by Sinead Hoskinson, and this was around building assessment literacy. Um, it was committing to partnership uh, between staff and students, uh, which which was really important. And I know something very close to the National Forum's heart. Uh, under a number of different themes, including um, providing effective feedback and, and feed forward with large groups and also uh, looking at different ways in which we can provide effective feedback um, to, to to students. And this last one uh, was spearheaded by Michael Costello of our um, uh, library staff in, in MTU, um, who created uh, a wonderful bank of open educational resources and uh, built them into the Canvas uh, learning management system that we have in MTU, meaning that students can self-enroll and that they can uh, undertake a whole series of different modules, including, in this case, understanding plagiarism, looking at effective search strategies, uh, and, and so on. So that's kind of three to four minutes. Hopefully, I didn't take too much time. It just gives you a very quick overview of how we use that funding. Uh, and it's, it's great to have the opportunity to acknowledge the support of the National Forum uh, and to thank them for, um, for assisting us in making sure we keep teaching and learning uh, center stage in, in MTU. So I'll stop sharing and hand it back to you, Terry. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I'll just hand over to Angelica now. 
Thank you, Derry, and uh, thank you again for the invitation to the to provide a Latin talk as well on our project. It's a privilege to be here today and seeing so many known uh, people in the audience. So uh, the project that I will present on, it's called Still Alive, Implementing Learning Analytics for Student Success. And I'm leading this project together with my colleague, Sarah Gibbons, who is uh, currently being seconded out during her leave uh, by our new colleague, Claire Happin, who I believe is also here today. So uh, it's important to mention that this project is a direct follow-up from the uh, previous Sattel funded uh, project, which was led by the soon-to-be Dr. Sinead Sullivan, in our, who is the director of our quality office. And one of the, it was a very multifaceted project, but one of its outcomes has been the, formula, the uh, wide consultation process throughout campus in order to arrive to a new policy on the use of data to enhance teaching, learning, and assessment or known uh, as short as the new learning analytics policy. So obviously this provides us with a framework and an umbrella under which uh, to, to be able to uh, start uh, making progress. And we would like to walk and run, but before that we have to really learn to crawl if you like, and we have to start with first principles approach to how we're going to extract data and how we're going to transform that data into information that is going to be used on the way forward. Sorry, so that Angelica, is... sorry Angelica, do you want to share your screen? Your screen isn't shared just now? Oh, my apologies. Sorry for that. Well, that would have been uh, much better for everyone <laughs> to be able to see what I was talking about. So apologies for that. So uh, basically what I was saying just here is that we want to start with this approach to data and to information. And in order to do that, uh, what we are aiming to achieve uh, through Stella Life, as we came to call the follow-up from the previous Stella project, was first to uh, scope and resource uh, with relevant stakeholders, namely academic registry, our data protection officer, business intelligence, quality office, registrar as well, to explore the potential for access and extraction of the student success data, student data mainly as well held on the student information services, but also data relating to VLE usage, different learning platforms and so on, and define a data management management plan that we can use around this. Uh, also, the second objective has to do with the baseline analysis of the variables that best, best can predict a student success for a specific selected cohorts and uh, triangulate that data to find those predictors. And finally, that will, uh, that will lead us to designing a protocol for intervention uh, to improve academic student experience in particular cohorts that, uh, that it's uh, timely, personalized, and actionable. And it is most importantly informed from the perspective of teachers, students, and uh, relevant support mechanisms as well. So that's what we want to do when we start considering data. Obviously, there's a wealth of data that can be considered. And we found it very useful to refer back to the ORLAC data conceptual model by the National Forum in order to provide guidance as to what data we can start looking at and uh, what that looks like in our particular context. And in doing all this, we really want to bring forward learnings of the wide consultation process that is taking place in the UL for the last two years and what the students told us. So we know that students uh, want to know uh, how and why their data is collected. So uh, keeping consent very much at the core and information at the core of what, of what we're going to do next. And students, we know that students, especially undergraduate students, welcome intervention to, allow, to avoid failure, but to promote as student success in positive and proactive ways, as we've been discussing today, and to make a difference to improve learning practices as a result. We know that interventions should be positive and constructive and based on several points of data. It's in, so we are being wary of not making mistakes in the direction of being led by, by particular uh, sources of data only and being careful as well on the tools and the mechanisms to provide student feedback we know of the potential detrimental uh, effect of uh, student dashboards when they are not used properly we know of the potential detrimental effect of invasive um, feedback provision mechanisms for example so we just want to inform the whole the whole uh, project in this light and just to finish with, in terms of the impact and sustainability of the project, we hope that by the end of it, we have a 
data management plan and approval for access data that we can escalate across different cohorts across the institution. We can establish mechanisms for extraction of data in collaboration with business intelligence units and uh, academic registry and other relevant stakeholders. We can pilot protocol that protocol for intervention in, the, in several cohorts on the years to come. And as we do so, we create a community of practice. We, uh, as people are involved in the project and, and, um, and we can therefore uh, share both internally and externally uh, the results of it. So we have more information there in those websites and uh, thanks so much for the attention. Many thanks, Angelica. And I'll hand over to, to, to Dylan just now. Perfect. Thanks, Terry. Um, as Terry said, oh, hi, everyone. As Terry said, my name is um, Dylan Scanlon, a postdoc researcher at the Teaching Enhancement Unit at Dublin City University. So today I'm going to talk to you about, we'll briefly talk to you about a few projects that we are conducting at the TU, which all have a similar overarching goal of enhancing the student experience through assessment. The pivot to the remote and online learning assessment has shed light on arguably a much needed redesigning of assessment. The changing modes of assessment across modules has brought a renewed need to review our assessment design, and pro design process and supporting quality assurance policies. The design of assessment must reflect the change patterns of engagement with learning by students and represent a development learning journey through the program. This brings us on to the research project myself and my colleagues Mark Glynn, Fiona O'Reardon and Claire Gormley are leading, the TESTA project, transforming the experiences of students through assessment. Many of the assessment issues in higher education are underpinned by issues of design of assessment practices at a program level. And as such, O'Neill points out, a lack of programme oversight can lead to fragmented assessment and feedback approaches. We believe a pro programmatic approach to assessment may assist in aligning assessment philosophies, encourage a broader use of assessment, allow students to apply knowledge across modules, and provide a vision for assessment change. As such, this project is building on the established TESTA framework to achieve such transformation. So where are we at? We recognize that the design of assessment varies across disciplines. So we are exploring assessment practices in each of the five faculties here at DCU. We have secured nine programs across five faculties to be part of this research project. While we wait for ethical approval, we're in the process of conducting a program assessment audit across the programs. We've extracted module information and aligned assessment components from the virtual learning environment to explore what is being done in the name of assessment across the respective programmes. Once we obtain ethical approval, we attend to meet with the programme team to conduct focus groups on the programme assessment audit to gain a deeper understanding of the assessment practices, to explore best practices and to identify areas for professional development and learning. We believe the student voice be central to this research and as such, we will administer an assessment experience questionnaire to students to gain an understanding of their experience with assessment in individual modules. To further explore their assessment experiences on probably a deeper level, we will conduct focus group with the students to gain that valuable student voice on assessment practices. Through extensive data analysis across the three data sets and the different voices, we intend to construct an assessment framework which is empirically and theoretically informed but accessible to higher education staff and adaptable to their respective contexts. What is particularly important is the interconnectedness of the assessment projects occurring in the teaching enhancement unit, which can inform and complement each other in enhancing the student experience through assessment. So for example, here at the TESTA project funded by Satchel 2020, as we work with the program teams, we will draw on the IUA led EDTL project in providing professional development and learning for staff. Similar when we talk with students, their voice and what we collectively do with such voice will be informed by the students as partners in assessment project. And when we're designing the assessment framework, we will link with the UDL project and the academic integrity project in that design process. All in all, these projects do not operate in isolation, but all interconnect and inform each other in moving our assessment research and practice forward. 
Thank you for listening to a quick stop tour of these assessment projects and happy to answer any questions through my email or Twitter. Over to you, Terry. Thank you, Emil and Dylan. And that was just a, a sample of the 74 initiatives that are actually funded through the, the Strategic Alignment Fund 2020. So next steps, we're, we're nearly there, next steps. We're going to write out to the registrars and the institutions. We're going to be asking them to identify the student success needs. We're going to send out the packs to all of the institutions so that you can work on them face to face. We will send out the links and a copy of this recording to everybody that's been here today. Um, the National Forum will be delighted to support institutions as they use, to use the resource. And I don't want to I have to take a moment to say a huge thanks to Brian Gormley, Katrina McGrahan, Rian and Kavanagh, and of course, our student intern last year, Chloe Power, who started this work for all the work they're developing in the resource and the work they're now going to be doing in supporting the institutions in the coming months. Um, I also see Leo Fall there. Lee, thank you for all the work you've done helping us to get so far. Um, we promise that we will work with institutions to capture and share good practice, and we will provide networking opportunities to help support collaboration. So just to finish up, I would like to thank the minister for his support. I would like to thank the HEA and the USI. I would like to thank our student assembly, many of whom are here today and who made contributions uh, to our videos. We have, uh, I would like to thank our student success advisory group who have provided so much guidance and support with us over the last few months. Um, and uh, they, you can, we have some resources and some videos of our, uh, our a student success guidance group that we'll be putting on the website. I would also like to thank all the experts, the staff and the students who contributed to the consultation. Um, you know, some people rarely get, get thanked, but I have to say a special thank to our digital process designer, Colin Lowry, who has designed the interface for you to use, who is actually and also designed the whole web space uh, for the seven seas taking stock. And I know he gave up his whole weekend to make sure that we could launch it today. So um, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes. I don't think that we acknowledge enough. And finally, I'd like to thank you for all your support. Remind you that Vital Week is on from the 8th to the 12th of November. We're expecting loads of submissions from everybody. No, we need lots more people to do lightning talks to share what they're doing. So please contribute. Um, uh, but as we finish our launch, we thought it was important just to remind you again and to capture some of the aspects of student success from our students and our staff and colleagues. So for our finishing piece, we asked us, our students and some of our colleagues and some staff to give us one word to, to uh, capture what student success means to them. Thank you, everybody. I think the word is commitment. It would have to be collaboration. Equity. Perseverance. Understanding. For me, the word collaboration. Opportunity. Achievement. Career. Employability. Developing skills. Learning about the world. Doing well. Learning. Understanding. Knowledge. Doing my best. First in my family. Overcoming obstacles. Leading by example. Passing exams. Exceeding my expectations. Working hard. Getting into my postgrad course. Progression. Resilient. Developing. The word I would choose is universal. So I'm going to use an Irish word for this. Uh, I'm going to use the word sprag because depending on the context, it can mean to inspire, it can mean to encourage, it can mean to motivate, which I think. Good teaching and learning does all of the above.